Hey everyone, and welcome back to Cruising with Matthew. In this video, I'm going to tell you all about Fred Olsen's Valletta, which I sailed on as part of a gifted media trip in November 2023. So, I really hope you enjoy this video. Now, Balletta was originally built in the year 2000, named as Amsterdam for Holland America Line. However, in 2020, Fred Olsen took ownership of her, renaming her Balletta after Fred Olsen's great-grandmother. She weighs in at 62,000 tonnes with a capacity of 1,300 passengers and 690 crew, making her a medium-sized cruise ship by today's standards. She's also the flagship of the Fred Olsen fleet. Now, we were kindly gifted the opportunity to sail on her for a special 15-night cruise culminating in the fleet in Funchal. This is where all three current ships of the Fred Olsen fleet, Borealis, Belletta and Balmoral, all met for the very first time in Madeira. To see more about that incredible day, click on the link to find out more. As amazing as that day was, we were equally as impressed with Belletta and found her to be a wonderful traditional ship. So without further ado, let's take a look around. Decks 1 and 2 consist entirely of cabins, as does the majority of Deck 3. However, midships on Deck 3, you'll find the lower level of the atrium. There's some seating, various pieces of artwork, and infographics detailing some of Fred Olsen's past fleet. Here is also where you'll see the base of the ornate clockwork sculpture and spiral staircase that acts as the focal point of Belletta's atrium, although we'll discuss that in greater detail shortly. Deck 3 is also where you'll find Belletta's wide wraparound promenade deck. This is one of my favourite features on board Belletta, as it gives you the opportunity to take in some incredible sea or port views, as well as being a good excuse to get your steps in. For instance, me and Yeyan often did a few laps after every meal, in a futile attempt to work off those cruise calories which inevitably accumulate. It's just a great space that is often lacking on other modern cruise ships, so we made full use of it during our cruise. The aft portion has to be a personal favourite of mine as you get some incredible views of the wake. I could honestly stay here for hours just listening to the sound of Belletta churning through the waves. Now, a unique feature to both Belletta and Borealis is the fact that they have terrace cabins. Unlike your traditional balcony cabins, these have doors which open right out onto the promenade deck. So, in theory, the entire promenade deck is your balcony. Now, you do get your own reserved deck chair if you want to sit out and relax. Likewise, if you're worried about privacy, all of the cabins on this deck, including terrace cabins and outside cabins, have a form of one-way glass fitted into them, so although you can see out, no one can see in. So that's something to be aware of if you're looking at booking into one of these cabin types on deck 3. Now, there are a few secret spots on this deck. For instance, at the aft area of the promenade, there are a set of stairs which leads down to a small bit of outside deck space on deck 2. This has a few deck chairs, as well as an excuse to be even closer to the wake of the ship, which I really appreciated. At the very front of the promenade, there's the chance to access Belletta's forecastle, which is open at certain times of the cruise, such as sailaways or periods of scenic cruising. Now, the first time you go through here, it really feels like you've taken a wrong turn somewhere, as these areas are typically reserved for crew. However, don't worry, you can go all the way through, and it is clearly signposted. From here, you can access the forecastle, which is a viewing area situated right on the bow of the ship itself. This was really impressive, and the maritime geek in me was absolutely over the moon, now, the best spot, in my opinion, has to be the lookout, which is accessible from steps leading off from the forecastle. Situated just below the bridge, you get a great view over the bow of the ship and gives you better forward-facing views. Now, jumping to Deck 4 at the very aft of the ship, you encounter the lower level of the two-deck tall main dining room. 
The lower level is called the Bloomsbury Restaurant, whilst the upper level on Deck 5 is called the Terrace Restaurant. I really enjoyed this space, as the multi-level layout of the dining rooms really helps make it feel really spacious, and even when it's completely full at dinner, it never felt too loud or crowded. I also love the stained glass flower pattern on the roof of the restaurants, as it looks so elegant and is something I haven't seen before on a cruise ship. Now the Bloomsbury restaurant is where you can enjoy both breakfast and lunch, whilst both levels are used for dinner. Now we ate in the main dining room for practically every meal during our cruise, and we really enjoyed it. At breakfast you had the option to have multiple courses, which isn't something that you often get to try, but you're on holiday, so why not? Now I typically started with a healthy option, such as a tropical or mixed berry bowl, although a personal favourite was the chocolate bowl. I'm not sure how that classes as a healthy choice, but there you go. Alternatively, you can opt for items such as cold cuts, cheeses, cereals and things like that. Of course you can opt for favourites such as a full English breakfast, which I often had during the cruise. Alternatively, you can go for an Eggs Benedict or customise an omelette to your liking, so there's definitely plenty of choice here. Lunch was just as impressive, with both me and Yayan choosing two to three course lunches for the duration of our cruise. Now we were impressed with the taste and presentation of practically every meal we were served. For dinner, you are given an allocated table in either restaurant and a set time to eat for the duration of your cruise. First sitting is at 6.15pm, whilst second sitting is at 8.30pm. Although not everyone's cup of tea, I really like having a set dining time and table, as it gives me chance to get to know our waiters and nearby table companions. It also gives us a bit of structure to our evening, and we don't need to worry about having to wait for a table, which in my opinion often occurs when you're doing freedom dining on other cruise lines. The main dining room also did a fantastic job at accommodating for Yeann's dairy intolerance, and I'm pretty sure for the 15 nights we were on board, they never said that they couldn't adapt something to suit Yeann's intolerance, even doing things like a creme brulee and stuff like that. The staff also deserve a mention, as they were always so warm and friendly at any meal time, and really helped to make each meal feel quite special so I'd highly recommend that you give each mealtime a try in the main dining room. Now leaving the Bloomsbury restaurant and moving forward, you find the auditorium. Found only on Borealis and Balletta, this is where you can enjoy culinary demonstrations from the galley team, which me and Yeyan attended most days of our cruise. During these demonstrations, they will teach you how to make a wide range of dishes, this includes regional specialities based on the ports that you're visiting, or particular dishes from both of Belletta's speciality restaurants. Me and Yeyan really enjoyed attending these, as we found them to be super informative, and you were also given a recipe sheet so you can replicate it at home, which I thought was a lovely touch. A personal highlight, however, was the fact that you got to taste a mini portion of the dish in question. The auditorium can also be used as a screening room for various movies, as well as where groups such as the ukulele class would rehearse on sea days and other people like that. Further along on deck 4, we encounter the first of Belletta's extra charge speciality restaurants, Colours and Tastes. This showcases meals from the length and breadth of Asia, and is a real favourite of mine. The restaurant itself feels wonderfully intimate, and the staff do a great job at offering good service in an unintrusive way. Now, we were gifted the opportunity to dine here twice during our cruise, and I have to say there is a great variety of food to choose from. To start the meal, you're given the chance to enjoy a variety of breads with a trio of tasty sauces to dip them in. For starters, I decided to go for the Korean barbecue bao buns, which tasted absolutely incredible, whereas on our second visit, I chose the beef maki rolls, which is something a little different to what I usually eat, and I really enjoyed giving it a go. However, my favourite main course had to be the chicken and prawn pad thai, which was packed full of flavour, although very filling. You can also choose a range of sides, including pork, sumai, or jasmine rice. 
As amazing as all this food is, you'll definitely want to leave some space for dessert. For instance, I chose the five spiced poached pear on one evening and on the next occasion, the spiced chocolate donut. These tasted absolutely amazing and was a fabulous way to end a great meal on board. It's important to note that the colours and taste menu changes every four days, so if you enjoyed the style of food here, you can go back at a later date and try a completely different menu. Now leaving colours and tastes, nearby you will find a small shop, which is where you can order duty-free spirits to pick up at the end of your cruise. Although I'm no expert, they did seem to have a good selection and looked rather popular, especially in the latter portion of our cruise. Moving further forwards, we encounter Balletta's Atrium once again. In my opinion, this deck is the best place to marvel at the Planeto Astrolabium Clockwork Centerpiece, which spans all three decks of Balletta's Atrium. Although quite distinct to other atriums I've come across, I just love the elaborate design of the centerpiece, and it felt like you spotted something new as you went about your day on board. What made this even better was that every hour on the hour, you could see the intricate clockwork mechanisms moving to chime in the next hour, so do keep an eye out for that. Now, around the atrium itself on deck 4, you'll find guest services, should you have any ship-based queries, or if you're like me, and you inevitably lose your cruise card at some point during your trip. Close by, you'll find Destination Services, which is the place to go if you want to book any Fred Olsen trips during your cruise. Now, we were kindly gifted several of these during our trip, and we were super impressed by the varied trips on offer here. This included a flamenco experience in Cadiz, paella making and a boat tour on the rice fields of Valencia, and olive making in Malaga. Moving further forward, we pass by the photo gallery. Here, you can buy a variety of photo equipment, a cruise video for your trip, as well as various photos taken by the ship's photographer. I was really happy to see that Balletta has large digital displays to showcase the photos rather than printing out every single one, so this was a big well done to Fred Olsen. At the very front of Deck 4, you'll find the Neptune Lounge, which is the lower level of Balletta's two-deck tall theatre, which spans both decks 4 and 5. This theatre is one of the comfiest I've come across, as rather than traditional theatre seats, you get to relax in either individual lounge style seats or rows of double seater sofas. There's also waiter service here too, so you can enjoy the show with your favourite cocktail, which was a lovely touch. By day, you can look forward to listening to lectures from varied speakers as part of Fred Olsen's enrichment programme. This included everything from the origins of Fred Olsen Cruise Lines itself to the history of the Moors in the Iberian Peninsula. You even get chance to listen to talks by the Balletta Theatre Company about life and board, as well as a Q&A session from the captain himself, so I definitely recommend looking out for these. By night, however, the theatre really comes into its own, giving you the chance to see a variety of performances for instance, during our cruise, we saw full production shows by the Balletta Theatre Company, as well as a virtuoso violinist, singers, a magician, and a comedian. These were all really high quality, so even if you're generally not a fan of going to the theatre, I'd highly recommend visiting. A personal highlight, however, was the incredible cruise show, which was so much fun and a true must-see. Now, if we jump up to Deck 5 and leave the upper level of the Neptune Lounge, we find ourselves back in the atrium at its highest level. Here, you could really take in the clockwork centerpiece, as well as the spiral staircase that runs alongside it. On this level of the atrium, you'll find the Future Cruise Information Desk. This allows you to book future cruises with Fred Olsen for extra benefits such as a lower deposit or extra onboard spend. Nearby, there's also a flower shop, should you want to celebrate a special occasion, or just because you want to treat yourself. On the opposite side of the atrium, you'll find the Ocean Bar. For the majority of the day, it's a quiet space where you can relax with a book whilst looking out to sea. In an evening, live music is often performed here, such as the talented string trio, or the classical pianist Jason Apora. The Ocean Bar also holds several special events, including the fantastic Shaken Not Stirred. 
suitably held on a former night for our cruise, this is a Bond-themed evening with the Balletta Theatre Company, during which they perform a range of classic Bond songs whilst you have the option to try a range of incredible martinis. This was a massively popular event, so I'd recommend you get there early. Likewise, you can also take part in a martini experience. This costs £22 per person and gives you the chance to learn about the history of the martini as well as how to make a variety of them. This is all done in a really fun and light-hearted way and we really enjoyed it. You can even volunteer yourself to make your favourite type of martini. Although it was a little nerve-wracking, the bartenders were so friendly and completely put us at ease and we ended up having such a laugh. You also get the chance to watch the bartenders show off their flaring skills, which was really impressive to see. What makes it even better is the fact that you can choose up to four martinis for you to enjoy. Do note, you're not required to have to drink them all as they can be redeemed for several days after the event, otherwise I'm pretty sure none of us would have made it back to our cabins that evening. Moving further aft on deck 5, we pass by the Morning Light Pub and Lounge. Named after Fred Olsen's first ever ship, it's one of the most popular venues on board, especially on a sea day. Now we spent lots of our time here trying our luck on the morning and afternoon trivia sessions. Now, although we never did all that well and we were never close to winning, it was all good fun and we really enjoyed it. There's also bingo held here and that is extremely popular, especially on days at sea. Throughout the day and into the evening, there's yet more live music played here, such as string trios or guitar vocalists. Now, if you're a fan of sport and you're worried about missing certain matches, then never fear, because one section of the Morning Light pub doubles up as a kind of sports bar where there's plenty of large flat screen TVs, so you'll never miss your favourite team play. Nearby the Morning Light pub are a range of shops which offer items such as clothes, cosmetics and some Fred Olsen branded souvenirs. Naturally, we just had to buy one of their teddies which became our mascot along with some Fred Olsen flags given to us as part of the Fleet in Fun Chow celebrations. Now running just off from the Morning Light pub is a brand new games room and offers a number of slot machines and things like that. It's a new feature to any Fred Olsen ship, so it will be interesting to see if they expand this to any of the sister ships. Moving further along on Deck 5, we find the Balletta card room. This is the place to go if you fancy a game of cards with your fellow passengers, as well as if you fancy a game of bridge. On longer cruises like ours, there are also opportunities to have bridge classes which are adapted for certain skill levels if you're wanting to improve how you play. Nearby, there's also the Piano Bar. This is a wonderful place to cosy up and read a book on a sea day. However, this area truly comes into its own at night as it's a great spot to grab a pre or post dinner drink and we enjoyed kicking a few of our nights off here, listening to Brad Moody play whilst going through the cocktails on offer here. Further along on Deck 5, you'll find the Bookmark Cafe and Lounge. This is the place to go if you fancy a hot drink as you can enjoy a range of teas, coffees and hot chocolates whilst relaxing in the many comfy seats in this area. There's also the opportunity to try a variety of yummy chocolates which can be taken home for a souvenir or just something to try whilst you're in your cabin. The staff here are really friendly and also helped accommodate Yayan by making a dairy-free hot chocolate so that was a really nice touch. As the name suggests, this is also where you'll find Balletta's library, which we thought to be well stocked for the size of ship with a variety of fiction and non-fiction genres. Now, if reading isn't your thing, there's also a selection of board games to enjoy here too, which seem to be well utilised, so if you want to have a nice chilled afternoon, then I think this is the perfect place to go. Next door, you'll find the Earth Room, which was added to Balletta in 2023. This is essentially a continuation of Balletta's library, but has more specialist and rarer books aimed at broadening our understanding of climate change, the impact of fossil fuels, and other environmental issues. You can also use tablets to listen to videos covering similar topics if you prefer to listen rather than read. I think this is a fantastic idea 
as it gives you the opportunity to educate yourself whilst you're on holiday if you so wish. Now on the opposite side of the ship, there's another new venue added to Balletta in 2023, the Botanical Room. As the name suggests, this lounge is dedicated to all things plant-based. Here you'll find books covering a variety of gardening, flower and plant topics, as well as a multitude of comfy seats to relax in. The raised table was also a great spot for laptop users, so if you have to do any work whilst you're away, then this is somewhere that I definitely recommend visiting. Adjacent to the botanical room is the oriental tea room, which is decorated in a gorgeous fashion and really stood out from every other venue on the ship. Here you can enjoy a variety of rare teas to drink and you can even take part in some rare tea tasting sessions, although do note these are extra charge. If you fancy something with a bit of a kick, you can even enjoy tea inspired cocktails such as the lime and mint martini. Nearby there's also a jewellery shop selling clog eye Welsh gold if you fancy a bit of retail therapy. At the very after deck 5 is the terrace restaurant, however as we've covered both main dining rooms we'll move on with the tour. Now both deck 6 and 7 consist entirely of cabins, with our premier suite being right at the front of deck 7, however I'll talk more about that in a future video, so watch this space. If we jump up to deck 8 and move to the forward section of the ship, you'll encounter the Atlantis Spa and Fitness Center. The fitness center is free to use and features a good range of gym equipment, including cross trainers, treadmills, and other gym machines. There's also a good number of free weights, as well as a separate area for spin classes, yoga, and things like that. An added benefit to this space is that you get some fantastic views over the bow of the ship. Although, do note, as it's right at the top of the ship, in choppy seas the movement of the ship can be quite noticeable. If you're wanting something a bit more relaxing than the athletic centre, then you can head over to the nearby Atlantis Spa. Here you can enjoy a number of treatments ranging from manicures, pedicures, facials and massages. If you prefer, there's also a salon offering hairstyling and colouring options as well. After your treatments, you can spend some time in the comfy relaxation room. Here you can sit back on the comfy padded deck chairs before going about your day. Now the final section is the thermal spa, which me and Yean really enjoyed. Here you get access to your own hot tub, which was sadly drained at the time of recording due to choppy seas, as well as these heated ceramic relaxation beds, which definitely did what they said on the tin, as we felt so chilled after being on these. There's also two different steam rooms to relax in if you fancy a bit of a detox, now in sunnier climes, you can also use the spa sun deck, which gives you a unique view over the bow of the ship. Overall, although not as modern as other thermal spas we've encountered, we felt it to be incredible value, as for an hour's access, it cost £10 per person or £17.50 for two people. To make it even better, when you book a slot, you actually book the entire area, Therefore, I'd strongly recommend this space to anyone, as it felt really exclusive and special, without being overly expensive. Moving further midships, we encounter the Lido Pool. This has its own retractable roof, which allows you to use this space whatever the weather. Here, you'll find a good-sized swimming pool, as well as several hot tubs to relax in. Surrounding the pool area itself are a good number of sunbeds, and also these padded lounges for you to relax in. Another great feature is the poolside cafe. Here you can enjoy some lighter meals should you miss breakfast, or you can enjoy a light bite if you're still hungry throughout the day. Moving further aft, we enter the view, which is Balletta's Buffet, open for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and a late night supper club. Now we didn't eat here all that often, as we tended to go to the main dining rooms for food, on the occasions that we did eat here, I really enjoyed the live cooking stations, where you can see the food being cooked right in front of you. For instance, I once ordered a chicken stir fry and that tasted incredible. The variety of food here was really impressive. For instance, I even got a chance to enjoy sushi, which is exceptionally rare to find at an included buffet, so I was very happy. The dessert options were also very tasty too. 
In the evening, one section of the view is converted into Belletta's second speciality restaurant, Vasco. Inspired by Goan cuisine, the dishes here are packed full of flavour and have generous portion sizes to match. We were gifted the opportunity to dine here on two occasions and like colours and tastes, the menu changes once every four days, so there's plenty of options to choose from. Your meal starts with a wonderful assortment of dips with a variety of naans, pita breads and poppadoms. These all tasted really good and helped set you up for the incredible meal to come. Starters are typically a sharing platter which includes a number of tasty dishes ranging from mackerel croquettes, grilled squid, chicken samosas and even mussels. For my main courses, I chose the lamb and chicken zakutis, whilst Yeyan opted for Goan curried prawns one night, and then on our second outing, he chose a Goan fish curry, which he said tasted fantastic. In case that wasn't enough food, you're served a selection of side dishes, and you can order as many of these as you wish. These include rice, spiced potatoes, dal, palak paneer, and vegetable pulao. Desserts are mercifully light, with options including babinka, which is a layered cake packed full of wonderful spices with quite a fudgy texture inside. On our second outing, I went for a Goan caramel pudding, which was super light and delicate. Now, the cost of Vasco and the previously mentioned colours and tastes are £10 per person if booked before your cruise or £15 if booked on board. In my opinion, they're both fantastic value and I would strongly recommend booking. Now, if we head outside and leave the view, we encounter a wonderful covered seating area thanks to the overhang from the deck above. Here you'll find some tables and chairs and is a perfect place to relax with a drink or you can enjoy your food from the view in the fresh air. Overlooking the pool deck itself is a statue of Jupiter which was actually transferred from the much-loved Black Watch prior to her being decommissioned. The pool itself is a great size and there's an ample amount of deck space surrounding it, meaning that there is plenty of space for sun loungers too. Do note that there are two areas of open deck space directly below the Lido pool on decks 6 and 7. On deck 7, you'll find some additional sunbeds should the main pool deck be busy, as well as giving you yet more chances to take in the incredible views of the ship's wake. On deck 6, you'll see much of the same, but there is a larger overhang from the decks above, so in sunnier climes, I imagine this area would be a good place to go if you'd prefer to be in the shade. Now, if we return to the pool deck and walk up some stairs to deck 9, you'll find some more open deck space, which gives you a great vantage point over the whole pool deck. However, if you step inside for a moment, you'll come across the Olsen Art Studio. This is the place to go if you're into arts and crafts, as you can get supplies here if you're busy working on your own creations during the cruise. If guided classes are more your thing, then you can always attend ones ranging from how to make certain crafts to watercolour paintings. It's a wonderfully airy space, with lots of different styles of art dotted around the venue, so I imagine it's a wonderful space to get creative during your cruise. Stepping back outside on the open decks, Deck 9 is also where you'll find traditional games such as shuffleboard and quoits. However, if you're feeling particularly active, you can also take advantage of the sports court which is nearby. From this vantage point, if you look up, you can see the striking double funnels of Balletta adorned with the Fred Olsen livery. As a maritime geek, I absolutely loved this spot, as it was a great place to take some photos. Walking further midships, there's a wonderful bit of open deck space which surrounds the retractable roof which is covering the Lido pool below. In sunnier climes, I imagine you'll find some sunbeds dotted around here, but whatever the weather, this is a great spot to take in the views of the sea or the port that you're visiting. Near the front of the ship, if you walk up some stairs, you'll find the sun deck on deck 10. From this viewpoint, you can essentially look all the way down the ship, which gave some great photo opportunities. The sun deck itself also has plenty of space for sun loungers, so if you're wanting to top up on your tan, then this would be an ideal spot. Nearby, there's a ship's mast, which the maritime geek in me really enjoyed finding. 
Now if we drop down to deck 9, you'll find my favourite bar on board the entire ship, the observatory. As the name infers, you get some incredible panoramic views thanks to the floor to ceiling windows in this venue. There's so many places to relax with a good number of comfy seats and sofas as well as these reclining chairs situated right at the front of the lounge, so do keep an eye out for those. A personal highlight has to be the large model of Belletta, and if I could, I would totally buy myself a copy. I also love the fact that the observatory actually hangs over the side of the ship slightly, so if you go right to the back of the observatory and look out the windows, you can look all the way down the side of the ship, which I thought was really cool. By day, the observatory is a great spot to relax, taking in the sea views with a coffee whilst reading your favourite book. However, in the afternoon on select sea days, the observatory hosts Fred Olsen's traditional afternoon tea, and we were kindly gifted the opportunity to try, which I was so excited about as I adore afternoon tea. When you arrive, you are shown to your table by white gloved waiters whilst an instrumentalist is playing relaxing music in the background. To start off your afternoon tea, you get the chance to choose from a range of loose leaf teas. Additionally, you can also get a cocktail or even a glass of champagne. The afternoon tea stand itself is absolutely massive, so I'd recommend you have a very light lunch indeed. It includes a number of finger sandwiches which all tasted great, as well as a decadent selection of cakes and patisserie. Next up, you can enjoy a selection of scones, including a fruit, plain and cheese scone, which is accompanied with butter, clotted cream and jam. Overall, I really enjoyed the afternoon tea, and I feel like it's a perfect way to celebrate a special occasion, or have it just because you can. They also did a great job at accommodating Yeon's dairy intolerance, with his afternoon tea looking practically identical to me, so well done to Fred Olsen for that. Another great event held in the observatory is the cheese and wine evening. The cost of this is dependent on your choice of wine, and we were so lucky to be gifted this opportunity. The staff do an amazing job at creating a cosy, intimate atmosphere with a dash of luxury. Now, in addition to your chosen bottle of wine, you get to enjoy a massive range of locally sourced cheeses, accompanied by a selection of crackers and homemade breads with my favourite cheese being the truffle manchego. Now, we were amazed to find that the executive chef had even gone to the trouble of sourcing some lactose-free cheese for Yeyan to enjoy, which was a lovely touch by Fred Olsen. In the early evenings, if you're a fan of dancing, there's the opportunity to put your best foot forward on the observatory's dance floor. It's also nice to see that Fred Olsen still have dance hosts on their sailings, so if you find yourself without a dance partner, then these individuals will be happy to help. Later into the evening, this space really comes into its own, and we really enjoyed heading up here for a few drinks, especially on a formal night. There's also a good selection of live music here, including the incredibly talented yet hilarious Impromptu Trio, who were here most evenings. Throughout our cruise, there were also special solo performances by members of the Balletta Theatre Company, as well as members of the entertainment team, which was always really good fun to watch, and was certainly very popular. So there you have it, my ship tour of Fred Olsen's Balletta, and I really hope you enjoyed it. She's a wonderful ship that goes against the grain by retaining that traditional aspect of cruising that other ships and cruise lines have done away with. Although this may not suit every cruiser, I absolutely love it, as it creates such a cosy and relaxed atmosphere. Over the course of our 15-night cruise, Belletta really began to feel like a second home, and I felt totally at ease as soon as I stepped on board. I think this is largely due to the fact that the staff in particular are so friendly and warm. No matter where you are on the ship, you're greeted with a smile, and on these longer cruises, it gives you a chance to get to know them on a personal level as well. I can't think of a better example of this than on Embarkation Day, where we saw several groups of passengers and crew embracing, having met on other Fred Olsen ships and cruisers. By the end of the cruise, you feel like you're part of the Fred Olsen family, and I think that's what makes a cruise on Belletta and Fred Olsen so unique. 
So one thing's for certain, if you're booked on Balletta, you're going to have a fantastic time. A massive thank you to Fred Olsen for gifting me this incredible trip, and I hope you've all enjoyed it. If you have, please like and subscribe as it's always appreciated. If you want to know more about Cruising with Matthew, then take a look at my social media links, which are in the description below. I hope that you're doing well at the moment, and I can't wait to see you in my next video. So until next time, this is Cruising with Matthew, and thank you so much for watching.